Hey everybody, this is Mike Bono from the North Andover Athletic Association, and you are listening to the Nightly News Podcast, the show that brings you inside the lines of North Andover High School Athletics. And once again, I am here with my sidekick, Al Purdy. Hey Al. Hey Mike, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. How's your summer? Hot. Hot. Good. No rain. No rain. I have a feeling Today. that I, I have a feeling our guest today is probably going to be asking for maybe $20 million in turf for uh, <laughs> for some of the fields down there at the high school, given that uh, we haven't had... The only thing that um, we're getting rain from is people crying from the Red Sox, losing 25, 28 to 5 or whatever the heck it is. That's, brutal, that's, brutal. that's it. Um, anyway, so our special guest today, Steve Nugent, Athletic Director, North Andover High School. Hi, Steve. Hey, Mike. Hey, Al. Hey, Mike. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the nightly news podcast. Um, so we are first going to give people some uh, you know some insight into who you are, uh, and then get into uh, your time as athletic director and um, your vision. But so tell everybody about yourself, your family, like you know background. All right. Well, this is the second podcast I've ever done. The first was with Rick Gorman. Okay. So uh, we are, you've got big shoes to fill. Um, so <laughs> This is my third podcast. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So uh, listen, thanks for the opportunity to come out today. I really, I'm looking forward to doing this. Uh, so a little bit of history behind me. Uh, my family and I, we moved here when I was in the second grade. So I, I said this back a, a long time ago. I'm not a true townie, but I've been here long enough. Um, I married a townie. Um, that kind of makes me a townie. Um, but my wife, Courtney, my three children, Molly, Maggie, Patrick, uh, Molly's in college. The other two are in, at the high school. I was a guidance counselor and a guidance director for over 20 years. And just a year ago, July 1, changed over to the athletic director. So uh, I graduated from high school here in North Andover in 87 and, and from St. A's in 91 and immediately got a coaching job here at the high school as the freshman boys soccer coach. So Ever since 1991, um, maybe before that, when I was a player, I, I've had a real strong love uh, and interest in high school athletics, North Andover High School athletics, and I love this town. Um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm, I would never li- want to live anywhere else. I've never aspired to live ever, anywhere else, and, and I, I just have such an excitement for you know doing things that make other people proud of where we live. And, and so that's why I took the the job. It was some people might call it a midlife crisis. Um, but changing jobs after 22 years, I went down the hall and became the athletic director. And, and since then, it's been uh, it's kind of a, been a whirlwind of a year. There are so many townies in North Andover. It's unbelievable. <laughs> so uh, I'm not surprised that you uh, are married to one. Um, and so you so you said you graduated from State A's 1991. You became the freshman soccer coach. Um, and then you became a guidance counselor here in 1997. Seven. Okay. Yep. And you were guidance counselor, guidance department for 23, 22 years, you said? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Wow. Um, and that's a big change. I mean, a big change in the sense of like, you know, you're, you're, you've been doing the same thing for, for so long. And, um, so take us through, like, what was the first year like? Like what, how was the transition? Um, you know, what are your thoughts on, on, yeah. on the first year? So the first, uh, task to get used to was, you know, you're not, not working as part of a team. You know, I, I had to kind of reinvent what I viewed as a team because in guidance, you know, I was, I was one of six, uh, we had two support staff and, and, and two more adjustment counselors. So there was 10 of us and mm-hmm. we, we worked closely, very closely. So that's the biggest thing I miss is the people that I, I kind of left and went down the hall. Um, but the, the big the big change for me, that was one big change, but another big change would be just, you know, it's a brand new job, even though it's just down the hall, even though it's something I've kind of aspired to be for most of my life, I had no idea how to do this. You know, thankfully, you know, Scott Young's in the building and the other MVCADs were really good to me. And show me, showing me the way, but really, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, think of a starting a job without a mentor and you're really learning on the fly. So for, for me, that was something that I really, um, I kind of relished in, in, in a way, you know, it was, it was exciting. You know, you, when you do something for so long in guidance, you, 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 almost, you know, the answers to the test almost, you know, so it was getting used to a whole, whole new set of questions and, and, uh, problems and, and really trying to, you know, find a way to put some energy towards something I thought was, uh, was needed. 
Yeah. What was the most, I guess, surprising aspect of, of taking on the AD job? Like, what did you come into it and find out three days, three months in? Oh, my God, I never expected to have to do. What yeah. is it? And this is, it's more a commentary on just generally working in a municipality. It just takes so much longer to get anything done. And that's that's the frustrating part. You know, I think that, you know, I've got a lot of, uh, maybe, well, you can be the judge of whether they're good ideas over the time, but I mean, I've got a lot of ideas, a lot of things that I want to do and a lot of people that want to do to support North Andover and North Andover Athletics. It just takes a lot longer than I really anticipated. So that was one of the biggest learning curves for me is really trying to be planful, um, somewhat strategic. Um, I'm not a real strong politician. I always tell people I'm not a good card player. You know, for those of people who know how to play 45s, like I don't bar bury my five. I lead with my five every time. So it's one of those things where I, I just kind of like to lay it out there the way it is and, and see how people react. And, you know, there's no hidden agenda. Um, so, you know, some of the things we might talk about today and some of the things people might see over the, over the course of the next few months, hopefully we'll get people excited for, you know, what a direction that we're heading. Great. Um, and, and you talked about the other athletic directors in the MVC. I assume you've established some great relationships with them. Um, yeah. But being the track coach for many years, uh, you kind of have an idea of sort of how the athletic department worked and probably had some ideas on things that maybe you wanted to change. Yeah. Based off of, you know, how things maybe have been run in the past and, and knew a lot of the people in the, in the conference, things like that. I assume that made it easier. It, no doubt about it. Yeah. I think, you know, when, you, when you're the indoor track coach and you're, you're in the gym every day and you see just stuff being left behind by people who, whether they use the gym once or, or multiple yeah. times and, and no one really holding them accountable, you know, it, it was no, um, you know, I, it really wasn't anybody's responsibility, but I thought, all right, if I ever get that job, I'm going to make sure that it's, you know, when someone walks into our gym, they think, oh my God, this is like the neatest place we've ever been, that the sound system works great and um, we can see the score. You know, we're working on all three right now, but um, you know those are the types of little the the, de the detail stuff. You know, what's what's your typical what's the typical life of a high school athletic director? Like, what's a typical day in the life of Steve yeah. Nugent? Um, you know, take us through that. So during when when we've got teams in season. During the day, you know, I, I, I'll come in with my kids because neither of them were driving really most of the year. So I'd come in early and, and really keep up with emails, answer phone calls, plan, make sure buses and transportation would always get a, an email or a call halfway through the day telling us half the buses that we had planned on picking our teams up at 2.30 weren't going to be there till 4. So it's working with those coaches and those teams to make sure they can get to their games on time, making sure the other ADs know and we're hosting you know, on the flip side, you know, adjusting all of those things. So more just, you know, it's, it's like a glorified party planner maybe, but on a daily basis with many parties going on at the same time. Um, you know, there's a lot more, it's, it's, it's just the same guidance as far as relationship building. I yeah. think that, you know, building relationships with those ADs and, and the, the referees and the officials and, the, um, you know, the, the people who work the scoreboard at, at basketball games. Another thing I had to learn, you know, we need at least three, if sometimes four people at those scoreboards every, at the uh, scorer's table, every single home game. I had no idea about that stuff. So for the day, day in life, that's kind of the ins and outs during the day. And then it's being at stuff in the afternoons, making sure... The kids, the parents understand they've got someone who's in that office who cares about them, who is going to be there for them, who's approachable, who's visible. Um, <clears throat> that was something that, you know, may or may not have been lacking in the past, but I, it's definitely something that I wanted to make sure was one of the most important things I took care of early on. Do you, who comes up with the schedules for the teams? Is that you or the coaches? So it's mostly, it's the, it's the ADs. It's the ADs. Um, there's okay. a committee inside of our group. There's 11 of us in the M MVC. We'll get our, so like I, I'll create the, the track schedules, indoor and outdoor, boys and girls for the league. But somebody else who might be the commissioner for a different league, they'll work together in concert with the other winter ADs and they'll come up with a, a, a schedule that makes sense. And seems like they kind of repeat a lot. I know when my kids were playing, it seemed like, you know, that the second game of the league away game of the fall was at Tewksbury for a few yeah. years in a row. On and Tuesdays then, and Thursdays yeah. for soccer. Yeah. And yeah. then, so you know, Monday, kinda... Wednesday, Friday for field hockey. Yeah, but I'm sure there's a lot more to it to, yeah. to get all of the nuances. Yeah, some of that, of. It, there's no doubt, Al, is a lot of it is repetitive in some shape or form, but a lot of it's based on when officials are available. So our leagues, you know, for basketball might play, um, you know, Tuesdays and Fridays, and some other leagues might play Mondays and Thursdays. So, you know, you've got, you only have so many right. officials that you've got to be able to work through that. How many kids participate in sports at North Denver High School? So roughly, we'll average five hundred athletes in a season. In a season, yeah. Okay. So it's and that's you know for a school of thirteen hundred and 
1350. You know, it's a pretty good participation rate. I mean, I'd say it's, you know, over the course of a year, you know, we, even though we're averaging 500 per, it's, it's, it's over 50% of our kids are participating in some form of athletics, which is awesome. That's yeah. great. That's surprising. I didn't think we'd yeah. high. Yeah, no, that's, and then, you know, that's, that's just athletics and then you got band and other things. So it's good that there's a lot of extracurricular activities Absolutely. that kids are participating in, um, at the high school, um, Something I I wanted to uh, ask you about. So, this year, um, you know, one of your one of the things that has your your fingerprint on it, I think, is um, a new registration system. And now you probably don't even know about no, this because no. uh, your your y- your kids are done yeah. at North End of a High, but it's it's no longer a Google Sheet. It's right. through the Arbiter system. So take us through take people through like wh- how that all happened and and um, you know why. Yeah, so um, yeah, um, thank you for noticing. We still haven't launched the uh, <laughs> the payment part, which is something that's coming soon. Where um, so basically, Arbiter Sports or Arbiter Registration. There's a lot of products that fall under the umbrella that the MIAA has endorsed. Now, the MIAA is the governing board for all things athletics for high schools in the city of Massachusetts. So this is one of the products we already use the the scheduling product, which is still evolving. It's something that's mandatory. That's how all of our ranking systems are determined. So we've got to enter scores in after every game and it goes into this big algorithm. And that's how teams uh, will get seated in the, in the state tournament. Well, another product in that family is Arbiter Registration. So it used to be called Family ID. A lot of schools around us use it, probably half of the MVC schools. The cool thing about it, you know, a couple of things. One, it will allow parents to have an opportunity to pay electronically, which we've never had that before. Um, there is a convenience fee, uh, and then we're working through how to split. We're probably going to split the difference. as a 3% convenience fee. So for instance, if it's a $300 user fee, that family might be paying $310. Um, so well, we do that for our water bill anyway. So <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> in North Hanover. So. <laughs> right. So I think it, what, what we're trying not to make it a, that sticker shock, you know, for yeah. that family, it's, 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 you know, for a lot of families, especially now, things are tight. So we're looking at potentially splitting the difference. So that's, that will be coming. That's something I'll communicate out this week as far as how to do that. Um, That's one of the big things, which will allow us to, I'll talk about it shortly, but revenue for us is a big, important thing for the athletic department. That's another thing I learned, Al, to your earlier question. Um, But the second feature is pretty cool. It it has an automatic reminding feature for families when physicals are going to expire. This is something that was the bane of any coach's existence, even for families. You know, families can't get a physical until after a 12-month cycle, the good news is it's good for 13 months, but just making sure families understand, like, your fizzle's going to expire. Mikey Bono can't, you know, continue playing soccer after September 13th. Let's just make sure it's in there before then. So, I'm sure Pat Gagne will appreciate that. <laughs> yes, he will. <laughs> yes. And for those of you who don't know, Pat, Pat is the... Uh, uh, admin, uh, secretary. Uh, she is I don't the know real what, athletic director she's at the, the high school. Yeah, yeah. I am Hero working for her. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I actually, I being the treasurer, um, a lot of the bills come in that we pay, come in to Pat. So I've gotten to know her and she's fantastic and uh, love working with her. But uh, but she but she manages a lot of that stuff, right, too. I remember my kids who didn't have their um, physicals up to date and we get an email from Pat. Oh, yeah. Physicals. <laughs> and like, I thought, but to your point, like, it's like, I thought we sent, and you got three kids, right? You got three yep. kids, you're going through the high school. Which one do we send? Who had a physical when? And so that would be, it, uh, people will love that. It's, I hope so. It, it's it's definitely a learning curve. The good news is we've got over 450 athletes already registered, which yeah. is fantastic. Um, but it's one of those things where it's a learning curve. It's new. So we, we just have to, you know, break through that and, and make it part of our norm. And I, I do believe long-term it's going to be a, a benefit for everybody. Yeah. So a question I, I've asked you before, and I just to let the people understand, how does the budget work for the athletic department? Great question, Al. It's it's something I'm still learning. Um, you know, Pat, Pat Agney, my right hand, she refers to it as real money and fake money. I don't even really know what that means. But but bottom line is we, we do have a line item in the budget for all of our coaches' stipends and, and a certain amount of money to get us going with transportation, things like that. However, is most of our budget is tied to what we bring in in revenue, and the revenue is tied to user fees, so what what athletes pay to uh, to participate, uh, gates, so what we charge for home events, and um, any other revenue stream. So this year, you know, it's last year we we spent almost twenty thousand dollars more than the year before, and part of that was due to COVID. 
uh, we didn't travel as much, and we were, but we still had other expenses. The other part, you know, just trying to build a structure where we have we can keep up with you know uniforms. They have to really be changed over at least every four years. Um, our our facilities, they're all about twenty years old. We're we're approaching. We're in our nineteenth year. We're approaching twenty years in. There really hasn't been any major upgrades. Um, <clears throat> our sound system, you know, it's it's famously flawed in the, in the um, both the Walsh Stadium outside and the Crozier Gymnasium, and things that need to be upgraded. So, there's a lot of things that you know I'm looking at this year, and, and one of them specifically is that we're you know this will be the first time it's said publicly, but we'll be sharing information soon about the fact that every varsity game played at Walsh, and every varsity contest played inside of Crozier, and any of our home boys hockey games. Those are the ones where we're going to be charging $5 a head for every, whether it's a parent or a student athlete. The good news is, this is something where NAAA comes in, as, uh, has offered to help create some uh, ticket packages, meaning, you know, f- uh, we'll show that, you know, the boys soccer team has uh, nine home games. And if you paid $5 a head, it's $45 for the season, but you could buy a season pass <clears throat> for X amount dollars. And, um, and, and, and show people, you know, there's a little bit, there's, there's a definite significant savings if you can buy it ahead of time. What it'll allow us to do is is really um, project out what we're going to bring in an in income and how we can staff these things and, and so forth. So be a lot more clear on, on paper uh, once I share that out. But that's that, among other things, between advertising and some, some other ways to raise some money, we, we've got to find a way to bring in a little bit more. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a good segue into the next sort of two topics. And obviously one of them is how the NAAA aligns with the athletic department and what role we play. And um, and then the other thing is just your vision. Now that you've been in the yeah. position for just over a year, um, sort of looking out, you know, one year, three year, 10 years, um, what you vision and what the Andover Athletics um, to look like, because I, I did... Um, read an old article from last year when you got the job and you're like, you know, I'm about 10 years out and this would be a, <laughs> this would be a great opportunity um, before you, it's hard to talk about retirement, mm-hmm. but, uh, uh, but anyway, you know, obviously you have a, you, you kind of have a vision. And so um, maybe we'll just start with the NAAA, right? Yeah. Like what, what role the NAAA, NAAA plays in, 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 in your life as athletic director. So that was one of my biggest uh, initiatives early on. Like the, the, my first year, I just wanted to be visible, accessible, and listen, and try to kind of develop a plan that we could roll out in year two and, and or maybe after that. And what I realized is that, you know, a lot of, even our coaches, they don't understand, our coaches, our athletes, our parents, our community didn't understand how incredibly valuable the NAAA was to just the implementation of a day in day out operation for athletics. You know, everything that exists on the walls in our gym is was donated by the NAAA. All the banners, the championship flags, the record boards are, you know, even our American flag. Everything in there is, was, you know, and soon to be something that we'll talk about maybe another time is uh, the scoreboards and the scorers table that will be upgraded. Um, significant increase and in, uh, improvement in what we can provide as far as an opportunity. So, our uh, uh, experience. So NAAA, what you know, what I tried to do with every single one of the tweets that I sent out from the athletic department, I tried to tag in AAA first or second. Chet Jackson was either first or second, and in AAA was the, was the other one. And just making sure people understood, like, this is this is the heartbeat of what we do here. And it, it, it has a, as, as people, if they listen to the previous podcast uh, with Bill Jensen, someone who I've, you know, forever um, found to be inspirational and someone I've respected forever, what they did back in the early 90s to save sports, um, what I'd like to try to find a way to raise similar capital, not so much to save, but to, to keep us at a level where every single person who walks into our facilities is jealous of what we have. Every single one of our parents, our student athletes, visitors, anyone, anyone even in town, they don't even have to have an athlete. They come into Walsh Stadium and they see something that's like the, the crown jewel of anything that they've ever been in for high school. Um, we got a lot of nice compliments a week ago when we hosted the Mac Jones camp. And it really was a good reminder of how blessed we are. But in order to keep that, you've got to find a way to, you know, to keep pushing and making sure you're making improvements. So simply put, NAAA, you know, has been and will continue to be a means for us to be considered one of the best athletic programs around. So it's, I've been blessed, you know, and it, 
I've developed some really nice friendships with some of the people on on, on board. And, you know, the, you guys, are, you know, t- two of our leaders and people who just will go and do anything for our student athletes, for our families. And it's really one of the best kept secrets in town. So that's my goal was to try to make that you guys a little bit more uh, known by, you know, the, the stakeholders. Yeah, yeah the, the Twitter has been great. Um, so we've talked in the past about, you know, things that you want to get going, you know, yeah. things that you want to build or things that you want to improve on. What, what can you share? What, what are the ones that you want to get out there right now? And what are the ones? Well, how much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> as much time as you need. Well, listen, uh, my goal is to swing for the fences, you know, and every time. And, you know, what I learned is, you know, things are going to take longer. So my hope is within the next couple of months, you know, probably sooner is sharing with anyone who will listen or read, um, you know, what we're hoping to do, you know, none of these things are imminent. None of these things have actually even, um, you know, taken a step beyond my lips or my, you know, conversations with people, but they include, <laughs> um, you know, taking our grass field. That's our baseball field and where we uh, play soccer in the fall. I, I think we need to make that turf, you know, as evidence this year, it's, it's, it's as brown as brown can be. It's, it has no irrigation out there. Um, you know, the geese are all over it when we do actually have green grass. It's impossible to keep up with. Um, it would be way easier to maintain and something, again, we'd all be proud of. I'd love to light the whole thing. I'd love to put lights on our tennis courts. I'd love to build a hockey rink either in North Andover or, or on that grass field that's, you know, up against the hill. Um, so there's a lot of things that, you know, just finding ways to improve the ability for us to roll out the best athletic program around. And these are all things that I do think are doable. It's just a matter of, you know, which one's first, how do we raise the capital for it and, and, and start to chip away at it. Just one hockey rink? <laughs> <laughs> if it's on campus, that's all we have room for. You can go, there is a two, two level hockey rink somewhere in Connecticut, I want to oh, say. There, so yeah. just, just throwing it out there. <laughs> so um, something that just sort of popped in my head, how, how does the, the middle school project yeah. play into sort of your vision and plan? Like, is that, yeah. like, a, is the high school going to use that, do you think, once that finally does um, uh, so I, I've, take place? I, it's a great question. And I'm still learning. You know, yeah. I, this is one of the meetings we, we sat down last July to kind of get me an update on, on where that stood. I hope that's, it's been tied up in some litigation for a number of years. Yeah. And my hope is we're able to put shovel in the ground at some point in time in the near future. That for sure has to get moving before we can do any of the things I talked about just a second ago. You know, we can't put a, a grass field that we use for all of our sub varsity games under construction until we've got another site to put our teams. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't exist right now. So it's, it's, it's very closely linked to what we would want to do at the high school. Um, so we're hoping you know, if that goes out to bid and, and um, we can get something you know, moving in the next couple of years, then, you know, maybe two or three years from now, we're getting closer to finalizing turning the grass into turf. Um, but, yeah, the hope would be that we've, you know, we'll have the ability to share the space with our town groups. You know, I know there's a, you know, in the end of the day, you know, just like we're sharing the high school athletic facility, my hope is that middle school facility will be something that all the, you know, stakeholders in town are, are sharing equitably and we can you know just find a better way to provide um you know an opportunity for our kids to get better at whatever they want to get better at yeah speaking of the middle school what um you know it seems like the sports that have the really strong connection with the high school uh, do do very well in high school so i'm thinking of track number one you know you've got your track kids coaching the youth track and field and there's no secret you uh, north end of a high track has been dominant for seven to ten years um, what's your, do you have a plan or do you have a hope or is there anything in place to kind of integrate a little bit more of the other youth sports teams with the high school, maybe coaches and players? Thanks for the compliment. Um, so yeah, so I, I don't know, um, like right now, something I said back at a, at a, a first article, I think with the Tribune back a year ago, you know, I had a vision of being the athletic director for the whole community, not just the high school. And I didn't mean that in a way that, um, <clears throat> From an egotistical standpoint, I just I wanted us to be a little bit more organized in how we approached things and how we supported things. Even though I'm the, the spring track coach still, um, you know, and I was relishing, you know, getting a great athlete who transitioned from lacrosse or baseball. It's my job now to make sure lacrosse has three teams, you know, freshman, var, JV, and varsity. So it's it's all part of you know what what I'm doing on a daily basis. So yes, <clears throat> the goal would be that. 
all of our youth programs have equal equal access to and 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 we're trying to get to a point where you know we're we're fully loaded I mean, we're one of the few high schools in the mvc that has a freshman level like a true freshman team at most of our varsity jv sports a lot of the sports, a lot of the towns that we compete against are struggling. You know, we're, we're going outside to the DCL and the uh, Middlesex League to pick up J- freshman games, and many of them are, are JV2 games where you would have some freshmen and other kids who didn't make the JV team. So um, we're blessed that we have many freshman teams, but we need to make sure every program has a freshman team. So every program is in a, sp- in a position where we're fully loaded with, you know, with candidates. So, yeah, that ties to the youth group. I think that's our, our, that the example you cited with track has been – very successful. It's been I think the the secret sauce, as Bill Varney calls it, um, you know, for our success as a high school program. So for sure, that's definitely something that you know, as as soon as I'm able to, um, I'm attending uh, fields committee meetings and getting to know the stakeholders. But it's something again, I I needed to take a real softer approach and maybe just get to know people a little bit before maybe they welcome me in and we, we can find a way to work together and and help. Can you? Um, so one of the things I love about the athletic department is that there's an opportunity for all people to participate in sports, including people who um, might have maybe some sort of a, a physical um, or uh, 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 you know, mental disability. Um, unified basketball comes to mind, yeah. right? Uh, I know we do um, the re- uh, unified wrestling. Um, and so can you talk about that for people that might have children going to the high school that aren't aware of the opportunities there and then the other thing too is I you know I, I don't know if other schools do this but um, it seems like there's an opportunity to expand obviously you can't do it on your own but uh, unified soccer um, un- a unified baseball or softball mm-hmm. um, type of event I don't know if any of the athletic other athletic directors have talked about that but anyway if you could sort of take people through what what you do at the high school right now yeah so one thing that we're really happy about was the unified basketball that started back probably five years ago. Uh, I work with Nick Savarese from Special Olympics at the time, and, and he's moved on, but he, uh, he got us going on that, and we have had a real successful run, and that happens in the fall. It's about a six-week program where we've got students with a varying range of disabilities working with students who are mentor athletes or partners, and they work together. They might practice once a week, and they'll have one game a week. And when we will host three matches or three games, and, and they'll travel for three, and when we host, we'll have one of them where we'll invite the North Northern Police Department, Fire Department. Um, a lot of the teams will finish up practice early or take a break and come into the gym, and it's really an awesome event. And just trying to put a spotlight on these students, that they're members of our school community, and, and really celebrating them. The goal would be to add unified track. That might be the next one. Mm. It's not just because I'm the track coach. In fact, I'm a little bit ashamed of the fact that we haven't quite started it yet. I'd say that we've got about four or five programs in the Merrimack Valley that already have, or four or five schools that already have unified track. Um, the, our conflict is we we run the youth program and the high school program, so adding this was a little bit too much to bite off. But we're committed to Jason Garenti and I have had some conversations. He's our indoor track coach now. We've talked a lot about this and trying to bring that in for next year. So that's something that's a goal to add that. So it's it's there's a unified bowling would be probably the third oh, one yeah. which exists. The other sports, unified soccer and, and softball and baseball, <clears throat> they exist in pockets right now. But I, I need to learn a little bit more about that. And yeah. it's it's really mapping things out and trying to have a strategic plan so that we can be successful. But for sure, you know. We've got a wide range of students with a wide range of abilities that are participating in activities even without unified basketball or unified track. So it's something right. it's really important to all of us. It's yeah. something we hope to continue. Yeah, right. The basketball game last year that I went to was one of the best events I had been to all year. And uh, I know in the past, the Wrestle Olympics that they've done, yeah. that was fun. that's phenomenal too. So hopefully they can bring that back this year. I know it took a pause because of COVID. Yeah. So it'd be nice to see that get back too. Yeah, yeah. Um, Anything else that you'd like to share with, uh, with the North Andover community, uh, just about your vision or, or you know, you know what, what, you, what you have in mind for the coming I, years? I've kind of hit on everything, you know, in quick. I, I, I talk fast when I get excited about stuff, so I apologize for how quickly I talked. But I think just to, just to reiterate, the, 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 the fact that, listen, <laughs> I, I know that for the people who are in the room when I interviewed for the job as athletic director, I, I, they asked me if I wanted to say anything in closing, and I said, I'm not sure I really want this job. And I got a lot of text messages later saying, you know, why did you say that? And I, and I 
it wasn't it was because I wasn't really running away from something. I just yeah. wasn't sure if I was I had the energy to put into this. I'll tell you, you know, here we are. That's 14 months ago. Um, I could not be more excited to be the athletic director at North Andover High School. I, I whether it's you know 10 years or 15 years or 20 years left in, in me for uh, as an education. I'm excited for the opportunity to, to make an impact on our community. And we've got such an amazing community. So my job is to make sure that every member of our school community, whether they're an athlete or not, feels excited and proud of what we have. And, you know, my lens is the athletic lens. So, you know, I'm going to work closely with, uh, you know, whether it's the music department or theater or other parts of our, our community. But again, my responsibility would be specifically for athletics. So, for the athletic facilities, for the you know the, the way we look on the field from a uniform standpoint, to you know to just you know every little detail that goes into hosting something and the way we represent North Andover, I want every member of our community you know again wh- whoever they are, however old they are, whether they sent their kids to North Andover High School or not, I want them to be proud of what we have here. So that's my goal, and you know I'm <laughs> I couldn't be more excited about it. So. It's, uh, my wife made a comment, you know, when we, someone said, does he like his job? And she said, well, he's getting out of bed earlier and earlier every day to get to work and, you know, and, and to get to work. So I've got a lot of work ahead of me. Um, and it's, it's, it's going to be a lot easier with the help of you two and then the rest of the NAAA and, and people who want to support North Andover Athletics. So I'm looking forward to sharing that information soon. And I, I just hope it's received well. I, uh, I don't think I've ever mentioned this to you before, but when you took the job as AD, I think I had the same conversation with at least 10 or 15 parents, and every one of them said, I'm so excited that Steve's going to be the AD, but he's not going to be in charge of guidance anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like they were really happy about that, but I think that's the, that, that's the most important thing. You know, People were really happy to see you get a new job, but they also knew what a great job you did in the guidance department, and, and they, they were going to miss you in that role as well. So I think that you can't really say much more about somebody than than that i appreciate that it, i you know what it, it made the transition way easier knowing you know the team we had and the meg pinkston was going to take over i mean she is just a superstar and yep. every one of those girls that works in that department including debbie conti are just you know they are you know again i kept i've used the phrase a lot but one of the best kept secrets in town and um, so you know knowing the position that they were in um, despite their former leader, me, uh, I think they're in a great spot. So I, I, I had a lot of confidence that they were going to be okay. Absolutely. Well, I think, I mean, we're really lucky here in North Andover to have you as the athletic director. Um, not only are you, would you be phenomenal if you were from another town, but the fact that you have roots here, you've lived here for so long, like you, your kids are in the school, the high school, right? Um, or two of them, right? Mm-hmm. Two left. Uh, um you know, just what you were just saying, the passion that sort of, you know, you can see and in, in, in with your vision and your, um, you know, what you want to do with the, with the program um, is very refreshing. And uh, especially, you know, just compared to the past. So uh, we're, we're lucky to, we're lucky to have you. Thank you. Um, Appreciate that. Yeah. So I, with that said, I, you know, I, um, uh, this this has been this has been great. I I love doing these, Al. I Absolutely. don't know about you. I mean, yeah. this is our third one. Yeah. Like these these conversations are are phenomenal, and and having people like Bill and and Steve, um, and, and then I'll just I'll tease the next uh, the next episode. It's going to be with uh, Bill Gordon from Gordon PT. Um, we're leading up into the uh, into the fall season, and so you know a lot of kids go from zero to one hundred. Uh, come August, they got to run that two miles, or they got to you know they got to make a weight. And, um, and unfortunately, sometimes they, they go about it the wrong way. Yeah, so we'll have... I would, I'm sorry to interrupt. I would say parents of incoming freshmen, uh, it's a must listen and we yeah. haven't even recorded it yet, but, um, just as a parent of two former, you know, freshmen, um, you don't realize what they're in for doing five days in a row of, of sports and then maybe a day off or sometimes six days in a row. Um, the aches, the pains, you know, differentiating between soreness and an injury. Um, I'm sure Bill's going to touch on that stuff and how to keep your kids healthy. Um, but it's really, it's an eye opener because I think just, you know, anyone out there who has kids who've played sports, youth sports are great, but you know, a practice or two a week, a game or two on the weekend is much different than five days in a row going all out and then having to take a day off and then go back at it five days in a row again. So I think Bill's going to offer a lot of good um, advice for people. And I think it's uh, going to be a must listen, especially for parents of really young athletes. Great. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Well, Steve, thank you again. Uh, Al, thank you. Um, And everybody, thank you for listening. 
Till next time, thank you for listening to the uh, North Andover Athletic Association's nightly news podcast, and we will chat with you next time. Bye.